Hi, I'm going to tell you a story. This happened a few years ago because it was in my Canon days. I was sharing a hide somewhere in Europe doing the European Jackal. And the man I was with, I, I know him, but we weren't actually traveling together. We just happened to be in the same place. And bear in mind, we get in this very small, pokey little hide very early in the morning. It's still dark. You've only just got out of bed. You're a bit dopey. And I've got the same routine. I do the same thing every time. I set my tripod up, put my big lens on. It would be a prime lens in those days, not a zoom. And then I format the card. I've downloaded my pictures the night before. Now I leave the formatting to the morning just in case I suddenly realize I've not done something. So I format and then I pick up my second camera, which has got a shorter zoom lens on, which I can hand hold, and I format that card. Now, as, as I start to format the other camera, I can feel this man staring at me. And I think, why is he staring at me? And then he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm formatting my card. He said, that's my camera. I felt terrible. He was very calm about it and I, I, I was absolutely devastated. I said to him, as long as you don't use that card again, when we get home, I can recover those pictures. 99.9% .9 certain I can, but oh, I felt terrible. But there's a lesson to be learned from this story. Don't share a hide with me. So today I'm back with the great crested grebes. I did these last year in the same park and it's a very good location. It's only five minutes from home for me. It's a city park, lots of people walking around here. The birds become accustomed to people. So I don't need to hide, I can just sit here. It's also got the advantage. This, this lake is very long, but it's not very wide. So they've nested more or less in the middle of the lake, but they're easily reachable. So I'm using the 150 to 400 mil lens on the OM-1 camera body. I've got my heavier tripod with the heavy head on, a vision blue head. It gets you much more smoother pans and there's far less vibration than when I use my lighter head. And I've still got the old bungee rope attached to the pan handle. So I don't have to touch the pan handle. I can pull like that because that's when you get the vibration. As soon as your hand touches that pan handle, the vibration from your hand, you can see it transmitted through the lens. This is my fifth morning. I've been getting here about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Typically I pack up about 10.30, 11. It depends on the light. When the light is strong, then 10.30, you've really lost it. It's become too contrasty. But in those hours, they have done the weed dance three times. So this is my fifth day, so I've only just started. So I've done roughly 16, 17 hours and had the weed dance three times. It doesn't occur very often. If you want to photograph the great crested grebe doing its weed dance, you've got to put the hours in. And they do other behavior displays as well, which are even rarer. On the day I chose to do my bit to camera, it was raining. But on the previous four days, I had quite reasonable weather. Sometimes it was too sunny, but mostly I had a, a bright hazy light, which is perfect. Great crested grebes have that white breast and neck, very easy to burn out those whites if you've got strong sunlight. Also, as a backdrop, I've got some lovely coloured water. There's a nice tree on the far bank, that's what's reflected into the water, and I tried to line myself up so the birds were within that reflection. If they went too far to the left or to the right, then you'd end up with a, a grey water. Nowhere near so pleasant. So they were nest building, and it's quite a flimsy nest, the great crested grebe, and I don't think they were doing a great job. Birds can vary as to the speed that they build a nest. If they really put their minds to it, they can complete a nest in a day. But this pair were very sluggish. They would often ignore the nest for several hours and then just do a little bit. And you can see here the female is inviting the male to mate. She hasn't climbed up on the nest, she's just resting her neck there. But if the male is going to mate, he will open up those facial discs on the side of his head. And he's just about starting to open them. So I'm starting to think he's going to mate. If they open up fully, then it's going to happen. Unfortunately, they're going to go with their backs to us. Not what we really want photographically. 
But this slow build-up is quite common, with the male, willy or won't he? Well, he didn't open those facial discs and he swam off. Now she's climbed up on top of the nest and notice she does this little quiver with the wings as well. Watch the male's facial disc. It's opening a little bit. That's better. More open. He's going to mate. Definitely going to mate. Fully open now. Now notice when he dismounts, he goes forward over the female's head. Always looks rather comical when he does that. And now we get a bit of head shaking. This is very much the routine they go through. They mate several times a day. So far they haven't laid any eggs and they still really need to build that nest up. It's okay when the water's calm, but when we get some wind and you get waves, that nest is going to get swamped. Nest building will actually carry on even after they've been sitting on eggs for several days. Even when they first hatch out the youngsters, that still keep adding to the nest. I like the fact they put some greenery on it. That greenery must have been floating on the water. They wouldn't have actually picked that for themselves. The female was constantly inviting the male to copulate. And he didn't actually take advantage of that very often. But here again you see the facial discs are opening. I'm more optimistic about a photograph because he's facing me. And over the front and down. Now great crested grebes have a greeting display. Two birds swim up to each other and shake their heads. But this is going a stage further. They're not just shaking their heads, they opened up those facial discs. And this is critical now. If you want to photograph the weed dance, you've got to be able to see this happening. And most important of all, have they got those facial discs open when they part? They're going to swim away from each other now, and I want those facial discs to be open. Now the rear bird has got hers open. I think that is the female at the back. You can just about tell the male from female. The male has got a slightly larger head. But I want him to open up his facial disc too. Yeah, that's open enough. He's going to dive. He's going to come up with something in his beak. Both of them are. They've both dived. Now I've just got to find them. Where are they going to come up? I almost missed them. They went right off to the left and came up just behind the nest. But that's the weed dance. And you've got to have that facial disc open before it's going to happen. There's always a lot of hesitation before a bird will climb up on the nest. They seem to really struggle with this. And this is the male now. When you've watched them for long enough, you can start to judge which one is the male, which one is the female. There's no real difference. The female just looks more dainty. These are birds that are not used to moving about on land. Now, the male seems to have taken up the mating position here. He did this several times. I'm not sure how common this is amongst great crested grebes. And he's even doing that little wing flick. You can see there's no eggs there at the moment. And I'm not optimistic that this nest is going to be successful. They've got a lot of problems, including this Canada goose. He's coming closer. At the moment, the birds don't feel threatened, but they will be aware of that Canada goose. They'll be keeping an eye on it. It's coming in closer. We've got a bit of aggression. Now the grebe will dive under the water and attack the Canada goose from underneath, prodding it with its sharp bill. 
so they can dry them off. But there was a constant stream of visitors, a coot. Now there's no eggs there at the moment, but the nest is getting damaged. When they have got eggs, the adults will stay with the nest more often, but they still do go off from time to time. There's also terrapins on the lake, which will be released pets. And I didn't see it myself, but other people told me they'd seen terrapins on top of the nest. And then there's the, the cormorant. Again, they're not going to deliberately do damage to the nest, they're just going to trample all over it. It's always been thought that cormorants spread their wings like this to dry them, and I see more recently there's a new theory now, it's to aid their digestion. How we know that, I've no idea. This grey heron appears to be studying the nest very closely. I don't think he is, he's looking into the water for fish. But when there's young chicks on that nest, they will be very vulnerable to the heron. This is the female on the nest now. I'm doing that little wing shake. The other thing they do after every mating is they go off and groom. And this seems to happen with many species of birds. The nest is just a mixture of sticks and vegetation. And unfortunately, from a photographer's point of view, a bit of paper too. I do love the colours on the water at this site, and it's a very open site. All too often great crested greaves nest in the reed bed or amongst branches where it's very difficult to get a clean shot of them. So once again the birds come together with a bit of head shaking, they've got the facial discs open as they part, so they dive under the water, they grab some leaves, come together and bang. Very lucky to be able to watch this sort of behaviour on a city park and be so close to it. As well as our city parks, our city cemeteries can also be wonderful places for wildlife. So next week's YouTube film, I'm going to look at some young foxes in a cemetery. Here's a short clip of what to expect. Thanks for watching.